Kinetic Cal, how's it going? I just finished working out. Is it too dark in here? Hold on. Look, I've got all my, um, before I turn the lights on, can you guys see? See how I have light? It's all fall up in here. Hold on. Is that better? Um, it is. It's totally, I'm such, like, a nerd. But hey, I embrace it. It's all fall up in here. I should turn more lights on. You probably can't grasp the whole, oops. We have like pumpkins here, floral arrangements, welcome autumn, see what I'm saying? And then I went to Pier 1 and just went crazy shopping. Um, hey Alexandra, hey Jesus, how's it going? Oh my God, I just had a killer workout and I was so excited in the middle of my workout, hold on. How's it going, everybody? Hey, hey, Pier 1 has my heart. Like, I go in there, and it's like the angels are singing. This is like a really awkward view, no matter where I stand. I'm not used to scoping in here. Um, Alexandra, how are you? You've been doing some killer scopes. Hey, everybody. Um, as you see people tuning in and leaving comments, make sure you follow everybody. I know Alexandra is like your travel guide to the West Coast. That's all I have to say about that. Every time I tune into one of her scopes, it's like, I need to go to there. Um, I just finished a somewhat questionable post-workout dinner that's usually good. It's this stuff from Trader Joe's. She's a total rock star. But I think it's been in my freezer too long. Freezer burn. Also, one side note. How many people have a toaster oven? I am a, re not reluctant, um, latent joiner of the toaster oven revolution. I'm quite pleased. Now, you're the bomb, both of you. Um... So here's the deal, guys. <sighs> Sorry. Um, I don't know how, I'm, how long I'm going to be able to hold my... Um, I love the toaster oven. My ex-man friend kind of got me into that because he was all about the toaster oven. Um, so that was something good that came out of that relationship. That was bitter. <laughs> Sorry. I have to lean down because now I'm starting to get my arms. I just, I just did a killer cir circuit workout. Kathy Friedrich, one of her... Um, muscle endurance, and as I finished this workout, as I got through it, no toaster oven, no microwave, and no dishwasher. That's crazy talk, but I commend you for that. I went for years without a um, dishwasher at my first place. I almost feel like I'm, I should be, you know, <laughs> I'm such a dork. Hey guys, really quick, do you think I should get my hair cut this length? Let's vote really quick. Nothing to do with my top fitness tips. Should I cut my hair like a bob? What do you think? I'm totally conflicted about my hair. In the process of moving, we'll lose all three in the move. All three what? Oh, <laughs> go for it. Go for it. You're telling me to go for it? I'm feeling it. I'm very conflicted about my hair. Sometimes that happens when you get old and you have a midlife crisis. I think I'm having a midlife crisis. Maybe I'll get a red Corvette too. Just kidding. <laughs> um, you think I should? Thanks, Tammy. A lot of people are saying I should. My muscles are hurting me. I said muscles like that on purpose. That's what my niece and my nephew used to say when they were little. So cute. <laughs> you just chopped five inches and love it. I tell you what other five... I, that was going to be inappropriate. I didn't mean to come out that way. I was going to say, I tell you something else you should chop, Kelly. You know what his name is. <laughs> inappropriate. But I'm just talking about the ex-boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, here's the deal. And I really didn't mean that to come out rated R. I meant for it in an innocent way. But usually everything I say comes out as a double entendre, and I don't mean it that way. But it, it usually works. Hey, guys. Kelly Alexa, CEO and founder of Fitfluential, F-I-T-F-L-U-E-N-T-I-A-L. -E I hope you go over to our website and subscribe. And most importantly, well, not most importantly, is this Christmas music? I have my iPod on just shuffle all songs. I'm just going for it. I'm taking a wild walk on the wild side. Um, download the new Fit Fluential app because, guys, there's big, cool stuff coming. Especially if you're my Fit, fit Fluential ambassadors, if you're in the house. I cut my hair, no regrets. Um, cool. Yeah, I think my hair is growing so fast. That's one of the things, too, that happens with all this hormonal uh, balance is your hair and your nails start to grow faster. Um, 
Of course, my hypothyroid situation is taking its own sweet time. And especially I'm a little disturbed that I'm not allowed to have peanut butter, but I'll get over it. I just have like the double whammy of hypothyroid and insulin resistance. I digress. Let me get to the point. I just had a killer workout, you guys. And for those of you that might have been following along with me, I switched my workouts from doing them in the morning to doing them at night. And I was in the middle of this circuit workout uh, that I, I worked out at home tonight. And um, I realized so much has changed in me, in my practices. I know this might sound look really weird, the way that I'm leaning on my counter. It's almost like I don't have a body, right? It's like just boobs and arm and a head, but I'm, I have to lean down. My arms are, are fried. Um, so I did this circuit workout and I realized how much has changed about me. Number one, that I have told myself I was going to switch to doing homework, excuse me, not home workouts, evening workouts. And I said that a week ago and I worked out every night without fail and I haven't decreased my intensity. Number two, I gave myself a challenge last month to say, and don't worry, I'm relating this all to you. This isn't about me doing a scope. It's just like, isn't Kelly awesome? It's about you. It's about encouraging you. Trust me, I'm gonna tie it all together. I promise, thank you for the hearts. So um, I'm doing the things I hate, like triceps, which is why I can barely hold my phone up. Triceps, chest, push-ups, so many things that if, if I did that workout like a year ago, I would have skipped half the workout. I would have fast-forwarded through so many things. I would have not stretched. And I've changed so many things because I've done the work on my brain. And, and that means like figured out my weak spots, figured out what my bad habits are, figured out, you know, things that I had to do that were holding me back from success. And I, you all know I've done so much additional research um, with all of this hormonal balance treatment I'm going through. Work the inside to work the outside. It's so true. So I was getting ready to come out here and I thought the title of my scope would be You've got you've to do the work on your mind. You've got to make up your mind. And then I thought, okay, that's not enough. Because what will happen is I'll come out here and start talking about how you've got to work on your mind. And it will be too long of a scope. And i got to kind of narrow it down. So I thought, let's do, because that's one of them. I feel like one of your top tips to fitness success is working on your mind. And that's probably the number one. But I thought, let me give my top three fitness tips, the things that have changed me and changed my results. And, and again, I'd say changed me most dramatically the past year, um, more so than ever. So that I can say at age 46, I am feeling better, more confident. I'm seeing better changes, better results. And I also just feel better about myself, like whether you want to call it emotionally, spiritually, however you want to label that. Thank you for the hearts. It's really been a game changer. So... Forgive my messy counter, but here are my notes to what are my top three, my top three um, fitness tips that are that are uh, really making a change on me, and I know will make a change on you. Like guys and gals, here's the thing. And Jesus, are you still on here? Power cakes. Is Jesus still on here? Like I know if any of you are listening to me and you are frustrated, you haven't started, you're feeling not motivated, whatever. Um, I guarantee you. Okay, and I'm not selling a program here. Hi, Jesus. I guarantee you, if you start doing this stuff, or taking even one of mine, and take my number one tip, if you start doing the work on your mind, you will have better results than you've ever imagined, okay? There's no specific program. There is no specific diet. There's a ton of different options for you to do. It's working on your mind is, is my number one tip. And what I mean by that is each one of us, like we each have our individual DNA, we've each got our own issues, okay? I, I've shared some of my most embarrassing issues with you guys. I've shared it on my blog before. Things like I had to figure out and you, you have to be comfortable analyzing yourself and like really recognizing your weaknesses, really recognizing what you have done and what you haven't done in the past. For me, one of the things that I recognized in myself, this was when I lived in my old house, is that whenever I get pissed off, whenever I get angry or sad, someone's really hurt my feelings or I get upset, how many of you do this? I immediately, I immediately want to go get the worst food possible and just pig out. How many of you guys do that? How many of you like self-sabotage, you need to, to find a tripod or set your phone down while scoping. Oh, is it moving too much? I'm sorry. 
The thing about I've used a, a tripod is um, when I set it still, um, then I move around too much. But I'm working on it. Actually, I did just see, I think Janelle posted something, and I'm going to order it from Amazon, so I'm working on it. Sorry about that. Um, as you can tell, <laughs> I have a little Italian in me. Um, good Lord, I used to do this, Kelly Alexa. I used to do what? The pigging out thing when you're pissed? All the food, and I'm upset. Um, what, is they, what did she say on 30 Rock? Excuse me while I go eat my feelings. Um, you guys, these are like embarrassing things, but the part when I'm saying work on your mind, if you figure out those issues that you have, if you figure out your tendencies, you can read all the books that you want, all the men's fitness articles, all the women's fitness articles that you want, but nothing's going to work, whether it's low carb or low fat or paleo or whatever. If you don't figure out what your triggers are and what your issues are, and, and furthermore, not just what your issues are, but kind of rewind and figure like, why do I do that? And for me, I'll just use that as an example. When I started to recognize that every time I got pissed off or upset or depressed or, or whatever, that that's what I would do. Now when that happens, because I'll be honest with you guys, it still happens. When I get down and I don't see the results I want, the first thing I think about doing is going and getting like a crap ton of boneless buffalo wings or going to Burger King and getting like five Big King sandwiches. But at least now, I'm able to calm down, and yeah, I literally will talk myself out of it. I'll be like, okay, if you really want to go, Kelly, you can go, but do you, do you really want to go, or can you wait? Can you have something else here that's around the house? Can you make a shake? Whatever. That mindset, being able to, and you might think it's corny, but I'm telling you, if you can get to the point where you can genuinely have a hard look at yourself, recognize what your tendencies are, be willing to say, have I really ever stuck to a diet? Have I really ever stuck to something? You know, how many of you on this scope have either said this or you know somebody that maybe you care about that you want to help lose weight or get in better shape? How many of you have said, I've tried everything and nothing works? How many of you have said that? I know I've said that in the past. Okay, and, and how many of you know somebody that has said that and you see that they want to change, but they're like, I've tried everything. Nothing works. I've tried every diet out there. I've tried this. I've tried every workout. It doesn't work. No one's really tried everything. Okay. Um, how many of you have said something to the effect of in the past? Um, well, I'm sure I need to lose five pounds. And the reality is once you got on the scale, you were like, holy crap balls. I have to lose 35. I have to lose 50 pounds. Most people, when they talk about getting healthier, they don't actually do the work. They don't actually get on the scale. They don't actually do a fitness test or go to the gym. They just talk about it at, like it's off off there, and they'll say, I don't have time for it. I don't have time to the gym. You know, I'm sure I should lose 5 or 10 pounds, but until you do the work on yourself and really start getting on the scale, looking at where you are, starting to track stuff, which is going to be my hint number two, you're not going to get anywhere. So tip number one, get in touch with the fact that being in control of your mind, being able to see when your mind is, is playing tricks on you, when your mind is telling you that you can't do it, when your mind is telling you that you should stop, when your mind is saying, you've been at this too long, you might as well give up. If you can control your mind, you can pick almost any fitness and diet program out there or eating approach, and you'll be fine. It's your mind, and how many of you that are on here that are successful, how many of my trainers that are on here would say that I, whatever, 80% of this is in your mind. The success or the what's going to be the determining factor is in your mind, right? And you guys, what I can tell you is, oh my God, my arms are on fire. Um, I have made more progress this year because I've been more honest with myself, because I've done more work with myself, because I don't let myself, my inner, I call her inner evil Kelly, that really doubts, that um, has no faith in my ability, that is so hypocrite, not hypocritical, self-critical. Um, I had a bunch of negative self-talk going on all the time. This is the year I finally made those changes. This is the year I finally dealt with that biatch Kelly, you know, that inner evil Kelly. That is what changed everything for me. Number two, and I just saw this on Facebook, such a huge mental game. It really is. It's, and it will always continue to be a mental game, guys. It's not like you're going to make these changes with anything that I ever talk about. You will have to work on this the rest of your life. 
Um, and, but that's that's just life. And the, the difference is, the more it's like a muscle, the more that you work on it, the easier it gets and the stronger it gets and, and you, the stronger you get. It's the God's honest truth. I, I feel like I say that every day. Like, wow, this gets easier and easier. Um, I'm flossing every day. I mean, that's a habit I never thought I would do. But your mind starts changing and you become so empowered that it causes a ripple effect throughout the rest of your life. I'm telling you. Number two, trust yourself. In, and you have to, at some point, start to realize, go with what you want to go with. And I'm not saying this to disrespect any specific trainer or trainers in general. Oh, that was weird. Um, but what I saw in one of the groups that I'm in is, is one girl, and this is not to say talk poorly about this girl, but she's like asking about fasted cardio. And if whoever asked about fasted cardio is on this scope, I'm not talking poorly about you. I'm using this as an example. Somebody was saying, should I do fasted cardio? I've heard good and bad about it. And what I wanted to chime in was, I can guarantee you, there are 50 trainers at any given time that'll tell you fasted cardio is awesome. And there's 50 trainers that will tell you fasted cardio is a joke. And there's 50 trainers that will tell you that cardio in general is a joke. And then there's 50 medical professionals that will point to any number of studies out there that support either doing a ton of cardio, low state, low, low intensity, long, um, you know, an hour long walks. Then there's some people that go, don't do hour long. You can't ever run for more than 10 minutes. Just know that in general, if you move and you eat right and you do something, it's better than not doing that. And at some point you have to trust. I got so derailed guys in my past years because being in the social media space and blogging, I'd share what I was doing and I would have someone come along all the time and tell me that what I was doing was wrong, that my cardio was wrong, that my diet was wrong, that my yoga was wrong, that kettlebells were the answer instead of this, that isolation training was over, that circuit training was over, that core training is ridiculous. Guys, I'm not, I'm not lying. At any given time, you can find support for both opposing sides. How many of you have encountered this and been totally confused? How many of you have started down a path or maybe you're, you're investigating a program and then you start to hear completely conflicting opinions or maybe you just read it. Maybe you're reading it in a magazine and you're like, wait a second, they're talking about how cardio is so bad, but I'm a runner. You know, should I stop running? No, you shouldn't stop running. You should do what you love. And there might be somebody, I'm just saying, if you get caught up in that, you'll end up never working out. And I did that. I don't want to say I was never working out, but for years I allowed myself to stop and I was constantly researching and never getting any work done because I didn't trust myself. And instead I should have been doing what I'm doing now, which is just enjoying it, creating fun challenges. Sorry, I'm switching arms, um, creating fun challenges and just doing the work. And if somebody, I guarantee you, somebody might be saying to me like right now, like, well, you're doing too little cardio or you're doing too much cardio or you don't have enough yoga. I'm liking what I'm doing and I'm seeing results. So you have to start trusting yourself and you have to stop thinking that you can find the one right diet or the one right workout. It doesn't exist. I could do Zumba every day. I have to push myself to lift the weights more than two times a week. Zumba's fun. And you know what? If it keeps you active... I have a friend of mine that got ridiculously fit in her 50s with Zumba. She's like, yeah, but I've heard it's bad. And I'm like, well, what in the world, Linda? If you love doing it, do Zumba. But she's so worried because it's not like CrossFit or it's not, you know, what so many other people are doing. Do what you love. Yeah, if you're doing Zumba, I'm not going to say, and probably no trainer or doctor or whoever is going to tell you, it's not a good idea for you to add strength training. We all know strength training is good. Plus, it gives you nice biceps like that. Um, but do what you like and know that there are 8 billion different ways to work out, 8 billion different ways to eat. Just eat better. Fitness reminds me of religion. That's true. Um, and then lastly, my last tip. So number one, make up your mind and constantly deal with your mind. Number two, trust yourself. Don't get caught up in what everybody will tell you. Because let me tell you, I'm just going to say it again. Every single time I put something up on Facebook, I have five differing opinions and people that will fight with each other on like a Facebook post arguing about, you know, whatever. Um, lastly, track. I never used to track anything. I never used to track my diet. I never used to track my workouts and it makes it fun. Um, it helps you, especially from a food perspective. How many people 
ha okay, let me ask you this. How many people here are tracking their foods in some way, even if it's informally? How many, give me hearts or let me know in the comments if you're tracking what you eat or in some way. Okay, so we have hearts. How many people um, are not tracking in any way? Okay, well, I actually won't be able to tell from the hearts, but all I can tell you is the first time in my adult life that I started losing weight was when I humbled myself People have been going, you should keep a food journal. I'm like, I know what I'm eating. It's fine. Well, once I started keeping a food journal, I realized at that point, I think I was supposed to be around 1,300 calories at that point in my life for what I was doing. And I was probably closer to like 2,500 calories a day. And getting a food journal and keeping track of what I was eating, huge game changer for me. And now what I'm doing is... <laughs> slowly getting up. Um, I have all of these, like, this is the first time I've ever done this. I'm actually, like, writing out my workouts in advance and planning them. And then, of course, I'm writing after my workouts. I give it a rating. How many stars? So I can look back and go, okay, not only did I address full body workouts, isolation training, core, and, and what I want to do for my goals, but did I work out at a certain intensity? And then every time when I do things like here, you know, one of my new workout programs that I do, and I mix in with everything else, I need a bath with Epsom salts, is, like, I never used to do this, and you probably can't read my writing, but, like, this is when I've done um, Beast, Body Beast, and this is some pretty hardcore, awesome, intense home training, but, like, I needed to know what I was using for weights. Um, some of these are, you know, like, I need to know when I go back and I'm going to do chest and triceps. The first, I, the first set I did 12, 15, 20, 20 for the, for the weights. And then for chest-wise, I did 10, 12, 15, 12. And then on the side, I don't know if you can see this, but like here, the last time I did chest and triceps, I put notes down here that, hey, I used my weight bench, and the weight bench that I have was not very effective. So I gave myself notes to say, next time use the step. And then I also gave myself notes on a couple of these, like on my tricep extensions, um, I did a set 8, 10, 12, 10, then I had to go down to eight, it was too heavy. So next time, I'll, I'll switch accordingly. So notes and tracking, oh my God, my arms. Notes and tracking will, you know, I have to be honest with you, it's made it really fun for me. Um, and it is, it's made it like I'm my own fitness project. And then it takes away the whole tendency I think so many of us have, which is we just look in the mirror and we want overnight results. How many of you guys have been guilty of that? I have. That you just get up. I used to get up and look in the mirror every single day and I would take my, my side, my before and after pictures, but you know, like front, side, rear, and I would expect to look different overnight, literally. And I know that's unreasonable. See, look at all the hearts coming in. And I stopped doing that because now I'm more focused, kind of like head down, focused on this, focused on consistency, focused on intensity. And now what's amazing is that I'll catch myself in the mirror when I put on my, you know, capris like this. I'm going, oh, my God, you know, these are starting to get looser around my stomach. And, and wow, my thighs are getting thinner. I notice it, and it's a happy notice. And it's, it's also a happy notice when people that haven't seen me are like, oh, my God. Like, oh, you know, my mom and, and people that you don't ask when you get that, that unsolicited, like, you're looking good. That's awesome, as opposed to standing in front of the mirror, picking yourself apart, expecting overnight results. Focus on the, excuse me, focus on the fun stuff. The tracking, you guys, has made this so much fun. I have to tell you, I have become like a data nerd, and it's not just here. It's translating into my business, into my blog. I wrote on my blog content for like the next three months. I am becoming a data nerd, and it's making me more effective, more focused, and guess what, you guys? I like have more time in my days, and yet I'm doing more stuff. That's all back to picking picking your mind apart. You got to do the hard work with yourself. You have to be able to analyze where you're weak, and then figure out a solution to it. And I just encourage you guys to do it. So. I hope that was helpful to you, and I'm doubting anybody has any questions, but before I wrap up, does, does anybody have any questions um, about some of the changes that I've made or things that you're frustrated with? Um, again, please note, I'm not a personal trainer, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a doctor. I'm just awesome. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I'm not kidding when I say I'm awesome. I'm pretty awesome, and you guys should all understand that you're awesome. This song is depressing. What song is this? Oh, it's Sade. 
I do think I'm going to cut my hair. So anybody have any questions? Because if not, I'm going to go get in an Epsom bath and I have to go let my neighbor's dog out. Let me tell you how much I love my neighbor. Remember my friend Patty I told you that has had like all of these calamities lately? I'm taking her dog out and picking up its poop. And I think it's gross that people that have to walk dogs have to pick up the dog's poop. I think it's so disgusting. And I'm sure if anybody was seeing me watch this dog, they would freak out. I'm dealing with hypothyroid from thyroid cancer, so you're inspiring me. Oh my gosh, I've never heard of, I didn't know you could get just thyroid cancer. I'm so sorry. Um, it, it is crazy. Like, I got my blood work done and realized that, <clears throat> excuse me, I had insulin resistance and hypothyroid in addition to basically every single part of my um, hormones being imbalanced. So I started doing the research. I thought the insulin resistance was, I don't know, the worst of the two. So I started doing all the research on that what what I needed to change with my diet there. And then just recently, because I, re I got my second blood work back and my hypothyroid was better, but not really better. And then I realized my hair is still falling out. Um, that's a sign of hypothyroid. My um, hands and feet get really, really cold. And so I'm like, wow, my hypothyroid really needs some attention. Well, when I started doing research on what causes hypothyroid and what foods can contribute to it, holy great balls of fire. It was a little depressing. But the cool thing is, is so many of these things, insulin resistance, so much about adrenal fatigue and hypothyroid and um, hormonal imbalances, it can be addressed with food and also, oh my God, my muscles are killing me in a good way. You're hypothyroid too? Um, yeah, peanut butter. Peanuts are really bad for hypothyroid. Um, I am putting together an ebook about this because I've done so much research and um, I know so many men and women are dealing with the same problems. So I'm, I'm, I'm working on this stuff as fast as I can, but it'll inevitably be available on my blog. Uh, some ebooks on hypothyroid, on all the research I've done for insulin resistance, on all the research I've done for hypothyroid, and then one that'll take for people that have both whammies like I do, hypothyroid and insulin resistance, because there's foods that you need to avoid uh, when you're insulin resistant, foods you need to avoid when you're hypothyroid, and then there's you know kind of some overlapping areas with the two of them. It can be a little confusing, but the interesting thing is how much I'm learning is it's kind of like back pain. It's, it's so much from lifestyle, guys. It's not like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. All of a sudden you wake up and you have hypothyroid. A lot of this comes from years of being, you know, it's the hormonal imbalance. It's from being on the pill. How many of you ladies here, you know I'm gonna talk about this, but I'm doing this for your own benefit. How many ladies here are on the pill, are on the birth control pill? Because I was on the pill since the time I was 19. How many, I, I know I saw one set of hearts. Oh my God, I'm so sore. Um, I gotta tell you guys, trust me when I say, take it from 46 year old Kelly. If I could go back to when I was 19 and they put me on the pill at Planned Parenthood and they're like, this is awesome. You're only gonna get your cycle for two days and you'll never have it on the weekend. Isn't that cool? I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yes, Shelly, being on the pill is one of the singular, single, sorry, single worst things you can possibly do for your long-term health. I encourage every single one of you that are on the pill to look into different options. If I could go back in my life and do anything and know what it was going to cause, I would never, ever, ever have gone on the pill. And I can tell you guys from experience, not only was on the on the pill most of my adult life, but then I went off of it for a while. And then um, in 2013, I was making killer progress with my fitness. I was leaning out. I think I got down to like 138, and I was really looking the best I looked in forever. Then my doctor put me back on this low low estrin. I was off the pill. She put me my OB put me on low low estrin Fay. If any of you are on that pill. Google it. It is the worst pill, worst, worst, worst thing on the market. And I'm sorry for those of you that are men that are listening. You're like, <sighs> but you guys, I, I just want to prevent people from going through what I've gone through. I have been through the seven worst years of my life physically and, and, and trying to work out and, and get fit and dealing with the, some of the worst symptoms you can possibly imagine. 
most of which came from being on the pill. And a lot of it then was exacerbated by doctors that put me on endless, endless streams of antibiotics and then just continued to double my dose, double my dose. Skin problems, put her on Accutane. And Accutane is horrible for you. Now I'm weaning myself off of spironolactone, which no one told me was a steroid. <laughs> and, you know, they're like, yeah, let's max out that. That's what traditional medicine is all about. You guys, get yourself off the pill. Look up the IUD. It's so much different now. Um, you hear this all the time. Oh, my God. So... When I saw my blood work, I mean, I, I just couldn't believe how much was, was wrong with me and how much work I'm having to do now to reverse years of lifestyle things that if I would have known, you know, hindsight is, is twenty twenty, obviously, but I am so fired up to get women to understand that if you're having these issues, it's not um, a sentence that you're just stuck with. Your doctor should not be putting you on antidepressants. There is a natural solution to this. It takes a lot of time. But you guys, it breaks my heart when I have 24-year-old women writing to me going, oh, my God. And they're telling me, you know, they've gained 40 pounds over the summer. And they're bleeding like crazy. And they're having horrible mood swings. And I've had a couple women write to me saying, like, their marriages are ruined because they're depressed and they're crabby all the time. And, you know, all these things. And they think there's no answer. And guess what? There is, but there's just not mainstream education on this. Everybody's heard of Suzanne Summers' books, but it still isn't mainstream, and there's still such a stigma. You know, even my local doctor, when I told her that I was seeing a specialist for bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment, God, that's such a mouthful. You know, she was very skeptical and very skeptical with, you know, me having, I had a uterine ablation procedure because um, I was having massive, massive bleeding. Her answer was to put me on low, low estrin, which I gained 20 pounds on low, low estrin. And I just got migraines every, every day I had a migraine. Every day I had to stop work and go lay on the couch. Never had migraines my whole life. So you guys, I didn't mean to get off on this tangent. But if any of you are on the pill, please, for your own sake, I, I obviously don't make, make any money from telling you this. I, trust me, I, you got to look into a different form of birth control. If you have daughters or friends or cousins that are on the pill, look into it. It is totally destroying your hormones. And some people will write and go, the pill is the only thing that, that keeps me from bleeding all the time or cramping or whatever. I understand that. There are other options, and I'm just telling you, my biggest regret is being on the pill all that. If I had any idea, and it can be such a game changer. It's great um, tangent, just saying. <laughs> Thanks. Shelly, you're awesome. So, guys, I have to go get in an Epsom bath because I know I'm going to. Oh, it's the Spice Girls. I do love the Spice Girls. Um, so, off subject, I'm trying your peanut butter cliff bar. Woo-woo! You guys, cliff bars? <laughs> The only thing that is, that is one of my favorite top three bars, shoot, of all times. How many of you guys have tried Cliff Builders bars? Um, they're seriously one of my favorites. I'm just sad because I have to wait to have those for a while because with hypothyroid, I can't have soy and it's soy protein. But I think they're, they're definitely in my top three bars for sure. But what I was telling you, Kinetic Cal, you've got to get the, the chocolate peanut butter one. Um, you have to dip it in peanut butter. I would stand at this very counter like this, dipping it in. And I have no shame telling you it is really good. I got to wait to have peanut butter for a while too, <laughs> but that's okay. Can I just give you guys one last tip? Anybody that's hypothyroid, almond butter. And this is some of my favorite. I know there's all these great brands and you're going to want to tune into some fit Flential campaigns we have going live next month. Hint, hint. Um, you'll see a lot of really great um, peanut butters and almond butters. But this is one of my favorite. It's the maple. And then I get this too. Coconut. Um, I also got this. Ugh. But sadly, this has soy in it. So... Um, you guys got to be careful. Even with a lot of chocolate that's out there, um, it has soy lecithin. So, again, if you're hypothyroid, you got to watch out for soy. That was upsetting because I felt like I could kind of pour this into my tub and just eat it. Um, I have to go, guys. Also, you can probably see how sleeping with the enemy my cabinets are. Except for my peanut butter because I take my almond butter. I take it down and use it so much and eat it so much that my counter is, or my cabinet is a mess. But um, anyway, I hope you guys have a great evening. Was this helpful for you? I know I had a tangent in there, and I didn't plan it, but I hope that my three fitness tips fired you up.
Jesus, you're the bomb. Thank you guys for the hearts. Um, and as usual, um, everything that I talk about here inevitably gets pummeled into my new, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Content calendar for my blog. And my wonderful assistant, Angie, is working with me. So a lot of this stuff I will elaborate on more over there. But you guys are the bomb. Oh, I thought that was Rick. Sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, Twitter chat tonight. Ooh, which, isn't it horrible that I don't know what Twitter chat it is? Hey, Seuss, what Twitter chat is it? Everybody, how many of you, if you haven't been on one of our Fitflential Twitter chats, they're usually um, 8 o'clock Central Time. Tune in. Prizes. Awesome people. Sometimes I'm on them, sometimes I'm not, depending on if I'm dead. I'm just kidding. I mean, figuratively speaking. But head on over to Twitter. I'm not sure which Twitter chat it is tonight, but obviously Jesus has the hookup. You guys have a great evening. I will see you tomorrow for my KO Coffee Talk. I think I'm going to go put a mask on and um, start looking up Botox procedures. <laughs> and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Um, who is it? Oh, is it Oh Yeah? Is that like the Oh Yeah protein brand? That's pretty cool. I have to talk to Jason about that. You guys have a great evening. Of course, it's not going to stop. My scopes never stop. You little pain in the butt. My phone. It's okay. You can just listen to Lady Gaga while I try to shut my phone off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>